Thanks for downloading the Swearing In Podcast, where you'll hear the origin stories of those who chose to serve. So ground your gear, take a seat, and listen up. The Swearing In Podcast starts right now. Hello and welcome to the Swearing In Podcast. I am your host, Marty Smith. Today, I continue my interview with former Army Sergeant Kyle Smith. This time, we talk about his completion of the Ranger Assessment and Selection Course, RASP, his assignment to the 1st Ranger Battalion in Savannah, Georgia, and his deployments to Afghanistan. So let's get on with part two of the interview with Kyle Smith. All right, so are we out of jump school yet? We graduated from jump school? He graduated from drum school. I immediately pack up my stuff and I go to the pre rasp barracks, which I'm pretty sure is probably the barracks you were in. When you oh, wait, now we're, not, oh, those old, those old goddamn World War yeah. II barracks. Yeah. Um, now, wait a minute. How, uh, how you were a 25 uniform right? mm-hmm. out of AIT. So you had follow on orders to go to jump school. How did you get the RASP orders? So it was during AIT when um, uh, we just get got done with our first uh, PT test for my class. Okay. And uh, this uh, ranger liaison comes up to me and he sees oh. how fast I run. Yeah. He gets my PT score and he was just like, I need him. So he comes up to me after wow. my run. Nice. And he's like, Hey man, you want to be a ranger? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what, what is that? And no yeah. offense. <laughs> but yeah. Right. He's like, you really yeah, had no like, idea what it was. I never really knew. I mean, I've seen uh black Hawk down, but you know, I never really thought about it. Yeah, sure. Really like sure. unit wise. Like I, I just thought I was going to go, you know, what we call basic army, you know, worldwide army. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, he's just, I was like, what does that entail? And he's like, you just get to be a badass, like <laughs> kick doors in, kick people in the face, shoot them. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And so yeah. during the the rest of my AIT, I got the okay. physical to uh, get airborne and RASP as well in my oh, package. I got you. I got you. So the, so the, the salesman came by, saw you, snatched you up. Yeah. <laughs> snatched me up pretty good. <laughs> you want to blow some stuff up, kick some doors in, shoot people in the face. And I'm like, I mean, yeah, I've never really blown some stuff up. Let's yeah. try it. See what happens. Yeah, who's who's worried about the civilian career after that? Right. Yeah, I'm already trying for jump school. I just couldn't get it in my contract initially. So I kept yeah, asking the question to my cadre. They prep you at all? I mean, did, did you go right from uh jump school graduation over to RAS? Did you have some time? You know, uh I I maybe had a weekend, but then the next day it was like go across the street. You're in for the time of your life. Oh, like, so you okay. just changed barracks and all of a sudden you're in. Yeah, literally. Wow. Wow. Day zero, day zero, 15 to 16 people quit. Really? And there was only like 30 of us. It wasn't much. Now, was it not? Enough? Yeah, this was this was in the middle of dead summer for Georgia. <sighs> Hot black top. And yes, we yes. were getting our bags were right next to us and we're just getting smoked senseless. Just right just in the first formation. See right? Who will, <laughs> right in the first formation. Yeah. And just to see who will quit. And half of them, at least probably about half of them quit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the point, right? And then they just, yeah. And then they just stopped smoking us. And I'm like, oh, is that, is that it gotcha. for the day? It's like the first hour, hour and a half yeah. of my life. Yeah. And then we got our barracks rooms. <laughs> Ranger, uh, just uh, for clarification reasons, uh, a lot of people think Ranger School is what makes you the go to the Ranger Battalion. It just no, no, you, we had an artillery guy who was a Ranger. Yeah, he, that just makes you what they call Ranger qualified, and you get that tab that says Ranger. Yeah, but to get that scroll and oh, the tambourine yeah. and the assignment, there. you yeah. got to go through the RASP. So okay. uh, once we get to Battalion, is when we normally go to Ranger School. Right. Yeah. So, so rip and rasp are the selection. Like you do everything a ranger does. Pretty much it is ranger school, but yeah. that is what gets you to battalion. That's what gets you that. Oh, that okay. I got you. And I got be you. a badass. Okay. And 
ranger school just it's a qualifier it's like oh hey it's a good thing for the resi you know yeah yeah uh I, at this point i'm sitting through pre rass just to go to a class yeah so it's like pt like crazy oh, my god man it's just <laughs> <laughs> you wake up you're instantly running and we had this one guy that was like a triathlon iron man <sighs> runner as a cadre and he was a dick i hated those guys man because they know they yeah. can smoke you on the run and all it says don't fall out yeah. they they give you the warning yeah yeah so you do your pt you get your breakfast you're and then you're just getting smoked constantly Ugh. because you're waiting for a class yeah got nothing else to do <laughs> so i was probably there about three weeks to a month okay where i took the pt test i scored high enough that i beat people to get into a class yeah and uh that's when selection started okay. and it was no better on day zero. Oh, really everybody's seen a lot of military movies where they wake you up super early yeah yeah like sure. two o'clock we're going for a run you're going to get smoked right. we're going to make you quit that's exactly what happened oh was it <laughs> you get you get introduced to everything you sign every form the next morning you get w- woken up early super like probably I think it was around two two thirty, and we God. ran a five mile instantly that day. Did you do a formation? Or did you do it individual? It was formation for the first half. It was formation for the first half, and then they cut then, you loose to, on the way back. Oh yeah, they they uh, they're the fast cadre, the triathlon runner, was in the lead, yeah, and no one told. I was in the back, and Ugh. like I wasn't told the to lead formation, but I knew something was happening because half the formation was like split it by like a quarter mile. So I'm oh, like, I am no. not getting, yeah, I'm like, I'm not getting stuck here in the back. Yeah. I run right as I run the cadre stops the back half and says, you have all fallen out. Oh, damn. Good stuff. So, good choice. Yeah, <laughs> it was a good choice because they instant, they, I didn't see him for another like three hours after that. Oh yeah. And we're getting smoked at this, uh, the football stadium that, um, Mel Gibson and We Were Soldiers was doing his uh we're about oh, to yeah, that, uh, speech. We're about to go to Vietnam speech, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh that's where we went to get just do some stairs, some suicides, uh-huh. all this like tr- sled drags and stuff. All the stuff that makes you throw up. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and so they were just like that was like the initial, and then you do a PT test, then just to see where you're at it's the first week and then yeah. they start testing you and getting pushing you harder okay okay and this is all the this the the rasp course right yes uh this is officially in rasp eight weeks of just misery oh all right all right so when did you get and i guess i'm a, I'm, I'm confused on the on how it flows when did you actually go to ranger school proper uh probably about two and a half eight to three years after i got to battalion oh you're kidding really <laughs> yeah it, it, it was more for the fact like ranger school i hate to say it like this but ranger school everybody like old-fashioned rangers yeah. definitely like they're like yeah you need to get this kind of thing or else you're nothing yeah and i'm like so what i did in selection to get here doesn't count for anything it's like you're not but you're not tabbed yet right yeah that you're not tabbed thing, yet. Right? Yeah. and i'm like well i'm not at 11 bravo i actually have a, no offense i have a job here to do yeah. so <laughs> i'm gonna do my job and when they want me to be ready yeah. be, i'll be ready for it sure but sadly uh i went to school but uh they they hate real rangers there and we can get oh, into that. Too. Yeah, they they we can get into that further too. But <laughs> they it's we uh we have to do a qualification before we even get selected for school. We have to do the PT right. test. We have to score a perfect. Yeah. Unless we get a perfect, they're not going to send us. Yeah. But yet, not like seventy percent of us get kicked out because of our PT. Huh. Yeah. Each class, every class, so. Third Battalion, which is stationed in Benning, their uh, battalion CEO and Sergeant Major went over uh, during their initial uh, PT tests. Yeah, to make sure there's no you know buffoonery and you know favoritism going on. Okay, 
And that show, there's a lot of favoritism oh, or yeah, bi- sure. a bias against us because we just need 41 push-ups in two minutes to. It's to, nothing. To you can do that. In, you can do that in yeah. almost 30 seconds. We need we need 80. We need at least like roughly like 72 to 75 to get 100 for our PT test. Yeah. So how are we getting kicked out because of yeah. our push-ups? Yeah. So good point. I was up. I, I figured out I, when I was up. He kept 40ing me. Like I've done like maybe 15 push-ups. Yeah. With a minute left to go. And I just needed that one. And he was, I'd stop. I look at him. I was like, tell me when. So I oh. slowly go down. Yeah. And I bounce my chest off the ground and I don't keep it there because they'll disqualify me. That, for that. That's right. Cause you're resting. And I'm I'm just holding it there. And he's yeah. just like, All right, come up. Fully lock huh. out my arms. And he's like, 41, you're good. And I'm like, Yeah, exactly. Wow. One of the, I, I, well, I, I shouldn't say that because I've known those guys. It's a, it's a huge number. It's a huge number game, but yeah. you know, it's like, I don't bash on anybody. Cause I, I heat cat it hard. Oh, did you? They got you. Yeah. That, that's how they got me. Cause uh, I passed my land ad the first time, yeah. but I fell down a hill. I lost my eye pro. <laughs> like I couldn't find it. It was pitch black and I'm not spending three hours trying to find it. Oh, so, night, night land nav, huh? Yeah, night land nav. Yeah. So I got called out for it and they disqualified me. I did redo it the next day, but I'm on like zero hours of sleep. Right. But the, And that's why, I, so you were in the Ranger bat doing 25 uniform? Yes. Oh, no shit. Okay. All right. It's like, uh, you know, you got your primary job, but in Ranger Regiment, infantry is always your job. You yeah. know, you, you go out, you have to shoot like them. You, like we shoot statistically, we've shot more rounds than the entire military or yeah. sorry, the entire Marine Corps itself. And that's just one battalion wow. with how much we go to the range. Wow. So you were with the, uh, the first battalion, right? Yes, I was. So were all three battalions there or the other, the other battalions off someplace else? Yeah. Uh, one's in a uh, Fort, uh, Joint Force Base Lewis in uh oh, think, Washington Lewis. State. Yeah. 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 McCord yeah. Lewis. Well, one's in Benning, uh, and one's one's in Savannah, Georgia. And first bat was in Savannah, right? Because you were in Savannah. Yes. All right. Correct. So so you're in the battalion. So so you're not tabbed yet, but you've gone through the RAS and everything else. Yes, I made it through selection. I got all the good stuff. Yeah. Ranger school is just, you know, the, the the bump up the resi. All right. All right. Uh the time came, I got my orders, I come back. Um the equipment I learned in AIT. Yeah. <laughs> nothing compared to what Ranger Regiment had. Like I probably knew one thing. Oh. One to two things out of, of the 30 things I had to learn. Yeah, that figures. Coming right? in the Ranger bat. That yeah. figures. And that was that was junk. Like I was like paperweight <laughs> to what they had. Do you have to do so comsec getting, and all that stuff? Are you responsible for all that kind of thing? Oh yeah, or uh, comsec teaching. Like we were never sitting around. If we were caught sitting down, we'd be smoked. Were they working off of? Uh, they still have sync cars at that at that time, or they'd move on to another radio system? Radio system. They moved on. They moved on to a couple radios. Uh, okay. You know, you have the the little black box, the M bitter. Um, which is our personal like slim uh radio, yeah. and then what I had to carry uh the one seventeen golf, which is handled all the satcom and all oh, the different oh. forms Very reach cool. further dis- distances and stuff yeah yeah did you what what was one thing you liked about twenty five u I think the one thing I liked about being a twenty five u was um honestly how you could just you could be in the rto and you know you can go actually go out on missions and stuff i didn't expect to but um oh did, they, think did the, they slice you off and put you out with uh companies and stuff oh yeah nice. uh, so i started i started off in the s6 made my way to charlie company yeah uh with with my team lead and he took me under his wing and i was very lucky to have him like you know he was kind of an ass sometimes but yeah. you know he did it out of kindness of his heart is that uh, awesome when you get a guy who's competent like that is like, Hey, let me teach you. I mean, yeah, my like, God, if we had more guys like that. Ugh. Yeah. It was like, they expected you to not sit around and do nothing. They wanted you to learn. Right. And I, I'll be honest in my first few months there, I was, 
or I should say a few weeks wasn't my best because <laughs> I was, I, you know, you get that mindset. Yeah. Like I, I finally made it like nothing bad's going to happen. No, yeah. no, no, oh, really? <laughs> that you learned yourself. You did classes and it was just a smoke show if you didn't. Yeah. And they wanted you to be a, a self learner. So I guess he saw that in me and took, just pretty much took me under his wing. But they, those guys are females and they, they make the biggest difference in the world. Just care a they, little bit, you know. They do, they, especially they when you're at an E3, E4 level. It's like, oh man, they, these guys are invaluable, right? And you still remember? Uh, you remember his name? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, Sergeant Work. He's actually still in. It. Did you go over? Did you deploy? Yes, I deployed three times. Like it took me a year just to get there. I think within the first six months, I was already overseas for my first deployment. Wow. So, okay, what year was it? Where'd you go? Uh, I was, it was the year 2014. Uh, it was late into the year, probably around October ish. Yeah. And I went to, uh, fob scorpion in near Kabul, Afghanistan. Oh man. So what are you thinking? What do you, what do you think when you hit the ground? Right. Honestly, I have no idea. My Sergeant already left, you know, they have the, the, the pre-flights for the, the big wigs that are going to take charge of something so they yeah. can do a, a good rollout. Okay. And um, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, I'm a PFC. I have no idea who's coming with me. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, we landed in Bagram. We got our initial brief, and he's just like, anybody going anywhere else? I was the only one raising my hand for uh, Scorpion. Yeah. And <laughs> Oh, no, really? <laughs> yeah. And he, I was like, sorry, Major, I'm supposed to go to Fobsco. Um, I don't know when or what I'm even doing. <laughs> and, wow. Yeah, he booked me a flight. Uh, I had to take a uh, Chinook over to Fobsco. Uh, my platoon sergeant picked me up, and I was pretty much in the J six for that entire deployment. Huh. So you were you were uh, task organized out. You were the only guy for that company, I assume. Uh, well, I was still in the the S six at the time, just yeah. pretty much all battalion communications. Oh, okay. And okay. Um, oh, so you were sliced had- off over to the battalion talk then. Yeah, pretty pretty much for the for the comp, for the whole compound, I was in charge of. Uh, we were in charge of the signal okay. and communications there. Right. But um, I, there was one another guy, but um, he kind of messed up so bad that he kind of got canned <laughs> after a, his oh, first month. <laughs> he got sent back. Kind of like get this guy out of here. <laughs> oh yeah, no. So uh, he left a um, highly sensitive equipment and oh. just all by itself when it should have been locked up and yeah. in the talk. Yeah, that'll and do. I caught it, and my platoon sergeant was just like, "Nope, we're no, I can't do this anymore with him." Really? Okay. So I, I survived the first deployment. <laughs> <laughs> How long was your deployment? Uh, four and a half months. Okay. Okay. But it, it felt like you know what we do over there is like a year deployment. Sure. Like you're constantly going out. Right. Sadly, right. I didn't. I didn't go out any of that time. Well, and that's where that's where it's interesting because, uh, um, like, I talked to a guy who was with the uh, 101st, and they went over as a battalion, or his battalion, and they stayed for like 15 months. I was like, wow. So uh, I don't know how they determine who goes for how long, and that's and that's nice it's your, that you were kind of abbreviated in that sense. Yeah, we we were in and out like. We did our all the like you know the good cool missions and stuff, yeah, and then we just yeah. we left it to the next rotation battalion because we had okay. three and we always deploy every year. So, you just oh, do you always rotate? Do you rotate within each other? The yeah, first, second, uh, pretty third? much. Oh, okay, okay. So then, then uh, so you rotate back, right? Yep. And how long was it before you had to go again? Eight months. Did you, you didn't go to the same place? Did you? Yes, I did. Oh no! <laughs> but I was assigned. I was assigned to a company at that point, so I actually had a pretty, pretty good time there. Oh, they pushed you down. <laughs> yeah. So, like, uh, I think after two months of coming back, um, my team leader and I, he became combo chief for Seco okay. for Charlie Company, yeah. and he took me with him to That's be cool. an RTO. Well, you uh, you had to be E four by that time, right? 
Yeah, got E4 when I came back. No, I, no one even knew. Like, I just saw it on my, uh, oh. you know, the <laughs> enlisted record report, and I'm like, E4? When when the hell did this happen? Nobody came <laughs> down and gave you any special stripes or anything? Yeah, so apparently he put it in because it was an early promotion. Yeah. And, um, oh, you nice. know, time served and all that. It, I yeah. definitely did not qualify, but he put, <laughs> someone put me in for an early promotion, and yeah. it pulled through, and they just never got word. Uh, you must impress somebody. That's nice. Yeah, they That's don't do all I could all hope for. They don't do that to the dirt bags. So they're very good, Kyle. <laughs> I try. <laughs> so you did what? Another four, five, six months there? Uh, yeah, I did another four and a half. I was oh, with the trolley okay. company. All right. Attached to the third platoon. Do you have to go? Was, were they just? Were they doing patrols? Were they? What was their assigned uh, duties? What was their day to day stuff? Honestly, our one of our jobs over at the FOB was to teach the AA, uh, the Afghan Army. Yeah. Until you know a good mission came along. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. And uh, that was just miserable in itself. Like we're supposed, <laughs> we uh, helped the Afghanis because you know our job there is you know um, yeah. help them work as a society and function. So we're giving them jobs, right? Making right. sure they you know weren't poisoning us and you know. God. checking out all their vehicles as they were checking out our water tanks because we didn't have a official source of water oh no really yeah we were septic tank all the whole time oh, oh my god <laughs> the worst Did part you... was that the contractors would take all the hot water really yeah they urge you for like a two minute shower because yeah, we don't have water the capacity yeah. yeah, water conservation, don't be a dick. Like, <laughs> save some hot water. I, I literally sat there for 15 minutes one day watching this guy take up all the hot water in his shower. And I'm just standing outside his stall, and it's the contractor, and he was just like, what's up? And I was like, do you not see the signs all over these walls and doors, guy? I yeah. know you're a contractor. You make money over yeah. here. Yeah. You can read. And he was just like, <laughs> he was just like, yeah. And I was like, it's not a it's not a it's it's not a resort it's a demand it's not a resort oh, yeah, or yeah. you know yeah yeah it's not a demand you need to, or it's demand you need to do it and he's like why i was like you're a dick you just took all the hot water guaranteed i'm not going to have a hot shower for the next four hours still took it and that's the thing just the perfect point you know that guy was prior military he knows yeah, you know? yeah he knows that shit in, man guy's probably making you know, Ridiculous. six figures at least. Why he's over there? Some high six figures, maybe. I don't a know. lot tax free too. Yeah, it's tax free after four months. Um, what uh, what finally led you? Because you, now you're about uh, what you're six years in. You're you're getting close, right? Yeah, it was at this point. Uh, I think after uh, Ranger School, yeah, incident where um things started coming into perspective for me because oh, okay. you don't go to school with like a year left, like unless you yeah. plan on reenlisting and telling true. them. That's true. That's and, true. So, okay. um, and it's also a commitment for your own head, right? Yeah. And yeah, also yeah. like gives me a goal. Yeah. Yeah. But um, during this time, like I, my, I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was the best communications chief. Yeah. I'll, I'll agree to that. Like come. Well, how do you measure great, that? Though, like, right? Yeah, but you yeah, knew like what you my I knew what I was doing. Yeah. I did it well. But the yeah. problem is, is I didn't play politics very well. I called it yeah. like it was. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you hit that E5 status, you're just like politics. I mean, yeah. Like, so that I got communications chief because every year they have a communicator uh, challenge. Yeah. Like, we have that, that dry period where we're not doing any training. So you get to do all the cool stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, communi yeah, yeah. Communicators had a signal yeah. competition for the battalion. Absolutely. So just to keep things going, I sure. won it that year. Yeah. Got communications specialist job. And um, you know, I thought that would be good enough to prove that I'm worthy of being a comms chief. Should be. Which it should be. But yeah. um when I was getting laterally promoted to corporal, that's when things started getting uh dicey. Yeah. One, I didn't go to ranger school, so I didn't have my tab, yeah. and they made a big deal about it. They decided not to listen to me, which, you know, <sighs> I no offense, you know, I'm 
the subject matter expert of communications. And every time you guys have an issue yeah. with the radio, it's usually the power's off and you're on the wrong channel. But there, there are a lot of good sergeants <laughs> there. But um, I bet you had dream. You had was, to have a dream where you walk up and go, "Oh, I'd like to fix you, but I can't. Ha- I don't have a Ranger tab, so I'm sorry about that. I guess you're going to have to go yeah, without comms." Yeah. <laughs> so, so I had a system like we had a site. Like if you had battery requests or if you yeah. had a, con- a radio request, like yeah. you go through me, you email me. Like okay. I made sure everybody was aware of it. Like so, someone calls me out. It's like, why haven't you had my radios ready? Like uh, <sighs> I needed them today, and I'm like, well, Sergeant, with all due respect, did you put in a request? Yeah. Did you email me directly or did you put it on the site? And he was like, no, I didn't. And I was like, so how am I supposed to know? Right. Right. And I don't think they like that very well. (laughs) Nobody likes to be held held to their own standard. It just doesn't work for them. That's right. So uh, I'm getting there. Uh, I won the competition. I'm back communication chief everybody's like i don't have a problem with the the lower like the team leaders platoon sergeants yeah and everything like like you don't mess with medics you don't mess with the comms you don't mess with supply because you can get cool Correct. stuff and you can get the new stuff and you can get really screwed if you do yeah exactly yeah. and i didn't throw that against them but like everybody was cool with me you know i gave yeah. them you know the, the new hotness you know the new <laughs> iphones and everything right <laughs> <laughs> and um uh, within like two or three days of my sergeant promotion board, because uh-huh. uh, we do that, I get told, "Hey, you're doing this," and I'm like, "I can't do that. My blues are getting sewn on right now with yeah. the corporal rank. Uh, it's only two and three days. I have to know my job stuff, which I I'm pretty yeah. You haven't had a chance to prep or anything like that. Yeah, and then you know I have to know infantry stuff too because I'm in ranger regiment. That's so, right. Two jobs. Yeah. I tell them I can't do it for a sergeant. You know, no offense to you. Looking for or looking ahead, it's like he was teaching me you always need to be ready, kind of thing. I just wasn't okay. catching on. That's a good, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. You, you're a ranger. You always have to be on the Fair. go. Like you always have a bug out bag. I didn't do it very well. So the third time comes around, I'm like, you know what? Screw it. If I get it, I get it. I don't, I don't. All right, okay. let's do it. Sorry. Okay. I passed and my, my regular platoon sergeant was there. Uh, he, yeah, you know, did his little, and he he did his intro. Yeah, really good dude. I, uh, um, uh, staff sergeant uh, or sergeant first class Christopher Ace Elise, rest in peace. He didn't make it uh, oh. July of 2018. Really? Yeah, he he was a really good guy. He was called the Silver Fox oh, around yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so as I'm getting out, at the first few months I got out, I found out my platoon sergeant didn't make it. Yeah. And I was just live it at that but he helped me get promoted to sergeant pretty much that's fantastic that's yeah, great. yeah he's very good guy do you do you know uh any circumstances around what happened to him yes uh so they were on a mission um something happened to where a vehicle got uh i think it was the ied hit one yeah. of their vehicles and they uh, needed to call an evac and they yeah. were just uh surrounded the evac went wrong and he got hit in the process uh, well, at least, you know, he went out on his feet. He went out doing what he's supposed to do. Yeah, very, if there's any, very good. Man. If there's any solace in that, but uh, you'll always remember him for, you know, one of those guys that helped you out. Yeah, I still got a, I don't know if the Air Force does it, but we got a KIA bracelets. Yeah, little, the little black bracelets yeah. that we got yeah. around her. Yeah, I got one. I got his because, you know, he, I, I actually knew him and, you know, he's That's a really great. good guy. That's good. After you got promoted, what uh what led you to get out well i extended for a year oh you did uh, okay and during that year i got the uh the extension i got the sergeant promotion so i probably had about eight months left yeah. on my contract it's kind of big decision uh, time at that point right yeah it's it a big decision time i had someone with I, w- I was with someone at the time that didn't work out with her wow yeah <laughs> luckily got got a, a an upgrade <laughs> <laughs> but um she uh or um i was just like what do i want to do so i'm about to go on my third third deployment and i still have no idea what i want to do i started talking to my uh one of my old squad leaders not the one that went with me to um seco not the one yeah. that took me under his wing but yeah. the guy that we replaced 
he started a cyber security or cyber program for regiment and it just started, they were taking anybody. Yeah. That was why those doors were wide open, wide open. Like just put it in. You were pretty much a shoe in. And I'm like thinking, okay, I got a good track record. I haven't been in trouble. Best RTO of 20, our best communicator of 2018, 2017 around there. Not a bad set of skills to get. If you're going to get out, not a bad set. No disagreements, but then come to find out someone keeps denying it because I didn't go to Ranger. I haven't completed (gasps) Ranger school. You kidding me? Yeah, I got because I didn't have that tab and I'm like an E5 without a tab. And that's really hard, especially with the battalion to do because they want you to have it. Yeah. And no offense to them. I just didn't see a point. And if it's not dealing with my job, how is it going to make me better? I mean, I'm already I'm already a Ranger. I know yeah. I'm a ranger. I've deployed th- two times on my third. I've done sure. everything possible. Sure. But you just I didn't haven't have to, gone through the course. Didn't do the school. But uh, I was like, okay, well, if this doesn't happen, I'm not going to relist and I am done. Yeah. They called my bluff, told him I wasn't coming back. Yeah, that's too bad. Uh, like, it was like my, the, he was like literally telling everybody, like, this is a guy you need. Like, yeah. he wants to do this. He's a great guy. Like I, I, I worked under him for maybe after I left Seco, uh, back and went back to the six. I was a team lead for him for about five months and okay, never had any issues. That's a great five months. Isn't that yeah, so rare? How rare is that? Right when you pretty, find when you find a good guy to work for, and it just doesn't last that long. It's crazy. Exactly. exactly. And I wanted to be better, but yeah. I was not. I was being told I couldn't. Yeah. And I'm like. Okay. And that's so, where the politics comes in. And that's where the politics <laughs> came in. <laughs> what do you got left to say, Kyle? I know you got a ton left to say. What do you got left to say oh, about man. your service? Oh, favorite would be second deployment for me. All right. I'm ready. Tell me. So what every, like once a week, we, we would alternate days. So we didn't have a conflicting schedule for the Taliban. Okay. We would be able to go to this mountain. Uh, we call it the GAR. And it was okay. like a mile, mile long high elevation grade. Like it felt like doing the incline in Manitou Springs. Oh, really? Yeah, but worse. Because okay. <laughs> the false summits were were real. Oh, really? And so every Friday we would just take our gear, full combat load, and we would go hike it. Right. It would take me like probably hour and a half, two hours top or hour and a half, maybe uh best time was probably <sighs> 59 minutes Jeez. and then but wait you're at this uh you're at scorpion right yes so what are you at you're at seven thousand six thousand feet already uh rough uh between georgia it was like roughly like a two thousand foot elevation at least oh god so we're yeah we're sitting pretty in the seven thousand ish maybe i think yeah so where you're starting and then you go for an hour Jeez. yeah and it was like a 1400 foot uh, in- increase in that too yeah. god yeah but you can always go there and then you just see the view of the fob and then on the back side you can see where the russian tanks buried themselves when they invaded in the 80s and 90s they're still there they're still there whoa the where yeah the the little trenches for their tanks are there there's like a mile long um junkyard of planes tanks oh, cars that were blown up and wow. stuff it's pretty yeah. cool we found a cannonball i'm pretty sure it was a cannonball <laughs> did you bring pictures home for that did you get did you, we, we tried to bring it home but <laughs> we got we got caught at customs oh you're kidding they're like what is this and we're like we have no idea but it looks cool <laughs> nope not allowed damn so okay so you're trekking up this thing right mm-hmm so it's like all loose gravel. Yeah. And, you know, we have like 100 plus pounds extra on our on our body with all this full combat load. Ugh. Yeah. And uh, I mean, beautiful views like it was it sucked going up, but it was fun going down because you like you had to run down like or else either, you're just tumbling. Right. Yeah. Either you're tumbling or like you're going to hit a rock and you're just going to slide the entire time. So oh, you kind of okay. like gotta find the balance there. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're just running down. There's this dog that always followed us. Like 
every time we went, he would just walk up with you the entire he'd kick your ass walking up because he's just really? waiting on you the entire time. But he would like hang out with you. That was just his like father. a stray dog, just a yeah. wild stray dog. dog. Oh, okay. Yeah. A lot of them. Oh, we really? Yeah, that same day I was doing inventory in our Connex box and there was like a herd of dogs. I wouldn't even say oh. a pack, like it was a herd. Oh, I see you passing the Connex door and you're just like, did I just see what I just saw? <laughs> like they all come and buy for food, huh? Yeah, it's, and we weren't supposed to feed them because for That's disease. Right. So we got an email saying you need to get rid of these dogs or we will like a mass email. Yeah. Didn't see the dogs the next day. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know what happened to them. I didn't hear any bangs. So I'm, I'm in good spirits about <laughs> what possibly okay. happened. Mess all wasn't given any specials that night or anything. No. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I don't even think the dogs would eat half that food. <laughs> Stay away from the curry. So then the time came to where it was one of the sergeants that tried to smoke me his birthday. And um, our our hooch was like thin plywood. So yeah. you heard everything. You could break it. Yeah, It didn't yeah. matter. So uh, this new private, because it was during uh, every two months, they'll do like, they'll switch some people out. You know, people that okay. want to deploy that deserve it. They'll come in and take over. Yeah. Um, so one of the new, new guys comes out. And we're like, hey, it's the sergeant's birthday. Here's what we're going to do. We stand outside the team leader lounge because we're not allowed in it. Right. They're playing their Xbox or PlayStation or whatever. And we tell this guy to say, Sergeant so-and-so, quit being a bitch and come get what you deserve. And what rank was he? Oh, the, this was a E5 being called out by E3. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would have come out. I would have come barreling out of there. So yeah, so so you hear uh, we surround a uh, we surround it in our bunks like we're hiding in the rooms yeah. around the team leader lounge, and so you hear what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> and he says it again, like he has the courage to say it again. <laughs> nice. <laughs> he nice. kicks the door open from the team leader lounge. Yeah, we surround him, but he gets a cold like he gets a hard shot on the dude. <laughs> oh, he did. Yeah, he got a hard <laughs> shot on him. We tackle him to the ground. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure just all lost of, you know, situational awareness just <laughs> out the window. There's no more we're break. break. We're breaking <laughs> We're breaking all the wood, all the doors, all the walls just to, like, beat him up. Yeah. It goes from happy birthday, like, beat up to yeah. a – Team, like to a squad beat up like weapon <laughs> squad against first squad oh it I'm, did. An atta- I'm an attachment so i have to choose sides <laughs> yeah, that's right so, choose the right side i choose the squad that i like the most and okay. uh, we end up in this one giant room across yeah. from the private lounge yeah one of the team leaders traps us in there and there's a fire extinguisher <laughs> so oh, we, our sergeant's tied up you know he's got zip ties yeah he can't move. He takes that pin out and starts squirting the fire extinguisher. What was was it chemical or was it? Oh, it was a pow- the powdered one. Oh. <laughs> so we can't breathe at this point. So we're stuck. <laughs> the door's locked. We're trying to tell the team lead to get like let us out. We can't breathe. So we yeah. break that door down, and we attack that team lead that locked us in there. <laughs> oh my god! It, yeah, the CBs had a lot of work to go. <laughs> I'm pretty sure like five rooms could not be lived in at the, after that. How did how did it come to an end? You're all too tired? Oh uh, yeah, it was pretty much our platoon sergeant came in oh, and saw us like just it, all yeah. like all like fighting in the like the skinny hallway, like 20 dudes just fighting yeah. in the skinny ass hallway. And he's like, All right, fun's <laughs> over. We got something to do. He was the, he was a really good sar- platoon sergeant. He took care of me, even yeah. though you know it was, it was a pretty bad second one. It had its ups and downs, but yeah, I still yeah. had a fun time going on the second one. Let's close it out with what's your proudest what's your proudest moment? I'd say proudest moment was um, actually today. Yeah, you know, I I went into the military not knowing what I wanted to do in life, yeah. not prioritizing myself. I mean, I I went through the suck came out a better person yeah and now i'm here working as a gsc for something i never thought i would be a part of and it's amazing former army sergeant kyle smith it's been yes, a pleasure sir. talking to you man thank you been very a pleasure much. talking thank you for the invite now it's a great story thanks for taking the time especially on your day off <laughs> oh 
it's not a problem. Gives me time away from the the misses. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Kyle. It's it's been a pleasure talking to you. All right, nice talking to you too. That was former Sergeant Kyle Smith, a comms guy in a Ranger battalion. I hope you enjoyed the episode and make sure to download the next as I sit down with Nick Carnesi, who tells us all why he swore in as a firefighter. So until next time, get on your feet and fall out. Fall out.